Unit 6, Part 2, we just saw what a tautology was. Tautology is an individual statement form where the column in the truth table under the major operator is all true. What is a contradiction? Very simple notion, as you would expect. A contradiction is a single statement form where the column under the major operator is all false. Right? So what is a paradigmatic contradiction in terms of a statement form? How about P and not P, right? P and not P, right? We've got a two-value two value logic. Every, every sentence is true or false. If it's not false, it's true. If it's not true, if it's not true, it's false. Um, according to this logic, there are other logics which don't do that, but that's what we have for our classical logic. Um, so if P is true or false, if P is true, not P is false, so, um, not B is true, P is false. They both have to be true for it to be true, so it's not possible for this to be true, right? Or under the major operator, major operator of this, right? P and not P, right? Okay, so that's my statement form. I'm asked to test to see what it is, right? Uh, okay, let me count all the sentential variables. P, oh, that's it, only one. So only need two, two rows, true and false. Um, not P, false, true, as before, so it's T and F is F, F, uh, F and T is also F, it's false everywhere, right? Oh. Most tautologies, you'll, most statement forms you'll be asked to test will have at least two variables, so the image you should associate is, right, false, oops, false, 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 right? That's the image you should associate for contradiction, right? Tautology. For tautology, T, 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 column of T's, contradiction, column of all F's, right? Pretty straightforward. Contingency is just an individual statement form where the column under the major, op major operator has at least one T and at least one F. Right? So there's a mixture of T's and F, right? It's just, it's the one that's left over from tautology and contradiction, right? If it's a statement form in our language, sentential logic language. Um, right, it's truth functional, every, every instance has a truth value. So if it's not all true, it's not all false, there have to be some true and some false. That's a contingency, as you'd expect, right? A contingency is a statement which is true in some cir circumstances or true in some situations and false in others, or true in some worlds and false in other worlds. Okay, that's a contingency, as you'd expect. Right, so what's the paradigmatic, what's the paradigmatic uh, contingency? What do you think? You can pause, unpause. P, right, P. Uh, if I test this argument form, <coughs> test the argument form P to see what it is, okay. So I'm testing P, let me go through the method, it's kind of silly in this situation, but the method is what? To, to the method for drawing up a truth table. Notice that this, I haven't said much about this, but it's exactly the same as what we did in Unit 5. You know how to draw up truth tables in Unit 5, and you're drawing up in Unit 5 truth tables for argument forms, but that's just a set of statement forms. An argument form is a set of statement forms. It's a bit, it sort of gets easier for these first three concepts. Logical implication and logical equivalence will be hard, um, but for these three, three concepts are sort of easy. You're just testing individual statement forms. You know how to compute truth, val truth values. So um, you just right, draw up. So if, you, if you're asked to test an individual statement form, you do the same thing. You count how many sentential variables. Right? You, write, you write the sentential, you write the uh, statement form as the column that you're going to fill, fill out. You count how many uh, sentential variables there are, put all the sentential variables, list them in the base columns, and then just compute the subformulas, and then compute the actual formula. Here, right, so applying that method, which is kind of silly here, but applying that method here, that's the formula. P is the formula I'm asked to test. I said P is my paradigmatic uh, contingency. Let me count how many all the sentential variables. P, I'm done. So just the one uh, sentential variable in the base column, True, false, so only two rows, 
and then the actual formula is it's identical, right? It's exactly the same as the base column. So it's true, false, but see how it fits the definition, right? It is the column under the major operator, or the, the column for this formula. <clears throat> there's at least one true, there's at least one false. P is true in some worlds, and, situation, and false in other worlds, okay? So that's it. Try P and Q, P or Q, do your own tables for them. You'll notice they fit the definition of contingency. There's at least one true, there's at least one false. All right? Okay, that's, that's it for them. Um, <clears throat> make sure you do do a few exercises, right? For the harder ones, you see the exercises are quite complex, but it's just a matter of computing, right? It's getting uh, more and more practice at computing truth tables, the act, uh, computing, computing truth tables, recognizing the structure of a complex formula, and I'll show you uh, at question two, right? Those are the kind of, those are the kind of um, statement forms that you'll be asked to test, but the actual computing of, computing of the truth values is what you already know how to do, right? Computing the subformulas, building out from the subformulas to the overall. But then your answer to the question, is it a contingency, contradiction, or tautology, is just, for that, you just look only at the major operator. Um, is it all true? Is it all false? Or are there some true and some false? All right. Uh, logical implication and logical equivalence, right? We're up to three now. These are a bit tougher concepts. Uh, logical, logical equivalence will be a bit easier. Logical implication is the hard one. Um, that fools people quite a bit. These, um, as I'll explain, are crucial concepts for what comes next. Okay, this is unit six. You do your exam after this, and then unit seven to nine, all that's part two of the course. Exam two is on only unit seven to nine, where we do proofs, and these concepts are the ones we'll be launching off to start part two. Um, the relation of logical implication will be the relation between the premises and the conclusion in all the rules you learn in unit seven. Okay. This is discussed in this chapter, of course, in units in unit six in section three. Um, section three, rules of inference, logical implication, and logical equivalence. <coughs> see that the, the relation of logical implication, if you look once again at the inside cover of your book, the top half, those are all the rules of inference, which um, you're introduced to in Unit 7. Um, all those ones are where, all those rules, where you've got premises and then a line, and a conclusion, um, the relation between what's above the line and what's below the line is the relation of logical implication. Right? All the ones on the bottom half of your book, those are... Um, um, replacement rules, those rules you're introduced to in Unit 8, and there you've got, in each case, pairs of formulas, right? two formulas separated by two pairs of dots. Right? That's in the, that difference, right? above the line it's premise, premise, line, therefore conclusion, whereas the bottom half, the Unit 8 ones, the replacement rules, are two pairs of dots, they indicate a different relation. The Unit 8 rules, the replacement rules, the relation between both sides of those formulas is a relation of logical equivalence, okay? And there's gonna be two big differences to the use of these rules, which you have to get very, very, very familiar with because it's, um, they're necessary to be able to do proofs. Those two, the two differences, which we won't state here, but the two um, differences in the use of these rules derives from the different relation, okay? But first of all, the important, the first thing to, to grasp is that what do these concepts apply to? Logical implication, logical equivalence. You can derive this from your mind. You can pull this out of your mind if you think about what it says, but it's what they apply to is um, pairs of statements. Right? It's a relation. Logical implication and logical equivalence, they're relation between statement forms. Right? Um, so they apply to pairs of statement forms or right, at least in the first instance they apply to pairs of statement form in the basic paradigmatic instance they apply to pairs of statement forms um, 
and by, by extension they can apply to more than pairs of stable forms. So for example, the rules of inference often have two premises and a conclusion. Um, <coughs> it's sort of the conjunction of the premises stand in the relation of logical implication to the conclusion. The premises logically imply the conclusion. Okay, um, good.